Sawete year threes and year fours. We hope you're well and that you're excited about this week's clip of Classics Club. We've got some exciting stuff to talk to you about. We're going to look at Hercules and his 12 levers, as, as Philippus has just brought up here. Uh, so many of you will, will know of Hercules. He's a very famous hero from the ancient world. And he had to perform 12 tasks in penance for killing all of his family, which wasn't actually his, his fault, as Philippus will, um, will, inform you, will inform you on. But uh, Hera sent him into a rage. He basically killed his whole family. And as a result, he had to carry out these 12 labors in, as, as his repentance. Um, so that's, com that's coming later. We also wanted to uh, give, a, give a shout out to Darcy, who sent in some great uh, and amazing drawing, which we're really, really impressed by, um, following on from our video on Medusa. So yeah, Philippus has just brought it up here. And yeah, it's really beautiful. Thank you so much, Darcy, for, for sending that in. We were really, really impressed. And we thought, uh, we heard that the myth of Bellerophon and Pegasus is one of your favourites. So we thought uh, we'd, we'd tell everyone about this myth in case, in case you didn't know. But it, follow, it does follow on really nicely from the myth of Medusa, which we spoke about in our first video. Uh, so but, but because Pegasus was born from Medusa. So whilst Medusa... Uh, what, sorry, whilst Pegasus was living in the mountains, enjoying, enjoying life, Bellerophon was an adventurous young man and he went to go and see uh, the young sea god Proteus. And Proteus was actually, they became friends, but Proteus wasn't actually as nice as he appeared. He was actually very jealous of Bellerophon and his adventurous nature. And so what he did, he was, he was actually, so... Proteus was son-in-law to king, um, to the king of Lycia. And what, what he did was he sent Bellerophon to Lycia to, um, to go and see his, his family there. Um, but actually, the letter that he sent Bellerophon with uh, contained, contained, the king, um, contained Proteus's orders for Bellerophon to be killed. So Bellerophon went, went away to Lycia, unknowingly holding a letter which ordered um, for him to be killed. And when he arrived there, the king of Lycia uh, took the letter and said, the best way to kill Bellerophon is to send him off and tell him to kill um, a beast called the Chimera, who was terrorizing Lycia. Um, the monster was taking uh, women and children from the town and, and terrorizing the town and it was um, it was a terrible monster she uh, the monster had a head of the head of a lion and the tail of a dragon so a really formidable and scary monster and Bellerophon had to go and slay the monster and so he went went away and went and visited a man called Polyedos who was, um, who was a very wise man in Lycia, and he asked him, "How am I going to, how am I going to kill um, the Chimera?" And Polyedus told him, "The what you need to do is you need to find Pegasus. With Pegasus, you'll be able to sp um, to slay chi the Chimera." And so there are many versions of what what um, Bellerophon then did, but he went in 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 a prominent version of, of the myth, he goes to the temple of Athena and he stays there for the whole night and he's offering lots of um, his possessions and goods and sacrifices to Athena in order to um, get Pegasus because Polyedo says you have to get Pegasus in order to defeat the Chimera. And so Athena in the end comes to him in a dream and offers him this gold bridle which is going to be able to a bridle is the is the necklace is the ch is the um, leather strap that a horse wears that you can control it with. So he received this gold bridle that he'd be able to um, tame Pegasus with, 
and also Athena shows him in his dream the direction to the well at which Pegasus drinks drinks water from. So then he wakes up and he's got this gold bridle and he knows where, Pe where he can find Pegasus and he's able to go and get Pegasus and uh, ultimately kill, kill the Chimera. Um, and yeah, it's a great story of, of um, success and uh, heroism. So it's a really great one to choose, Darcy. Thank you for recommending it. Thank you, Tiberius. That was fascinating. Um, Tiberius, can you still see the PowerPoint? I sure can. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. So uh, we'll move swiftly on and let's dive into our main topic for today's video, where we'll explore the greatest of all heroes in classical mythology. Heracles, for a Greek reader, or Hercules for a Roman one. But since we're doing Latin club, we'll try and stick to Hercules. So, Hercules. Hercules was the son of Zeus, he was the king of the gods, and Alcmene, he was a mere mortal woman. And some of you will already know that Zeus was actually married to Hera, the queen of the gods. So when Zeus gave birth to Hercules, Hera felt betrayed. And so she hated Hercules. Fun fact, by the way, the name Heracles in Greek actually means glory of Hera, but clearly Hera didn't like Hercules. Um, so she put two snakes in his cradle to kill him. However, the baby Hercules was already strong enough to crush the snakes in his hand, which is rather impressive for a newborn baby, I think. But after that, um, you know, that was just the start of his superhuman life. And um, it's always worth remembering that um, Hercules was a half god to Zeus, um, hence why he was able to be so strong. So moving on. At some point in Hercules' later life, he was confronted with a difficult decision, which is often called the choice of Hercules or Hercules at the crossroads. Here he had to decide whether he would live a life of pleasure and no fame, or whether he would be made to work hard and win glory for himself among future generations. Here in this picture by Annabel Caracci from 1596, I think, two women are depicted. The one on the right is called Pleasure. He was trying to persuade Heracles um, to join her. Um, along with those instruments you can see and the theatrical mask on the bottom right. However, on the left, we have the woman called Virtue, i.e. the good woman, convincing Hercules that he should work hard and gain a reputation for himself. Darcy will also be pleased to know that Pegasus features here in the top left, um, which Virtue is pointing to, um, Hercules' winged horse. Which choice do you think Hercules chose? Well, we'll soon find out. Now, moving on. So if you guessed that Hercules went for virtue and therefore hard work, well done, you guessed correctly. That's probably the reason why we know of him today. In this picture, we have part of a mosaic, just like the brilliant ones you have made last term, in fact. And this Roman mosaic, um, probably made in the third century AD and is made out of limestone, um, is now in a museum in Spain. What we can see are lots of different pictures, which gives us the story of the 12 labors of Hercules. But here's a question. What did Hercules do to beset these 12 labors? Um, surely it's a punishment of some kind, you might ask. Well, as Tiberius had just explained, um, indeed it was, Hercules was actually, um, um, Hercules actually killed his wife, Megara, and his three children, um, since Hera, who, made, um, who hated him, made him uh, rather mad. And he therefore mistook his family as his enemies. So to make up for this, Hercules was made to undertake these 12 virtually impossible labors over 12 years, which were set by the king, Eurystheus of the land of Tiryns. If Hercules completed them all, well, he would gain himself immortality and be able to live forever. But before we find out um, whether he did or didn't, let's take um, a look at some real life pictures of art, which shows what Hercules had to do. Here we have some marble sculptures on the side of the Temple of Olympian Zeus in Greece. Not all of them are in very good condition. So um, artists and archeologists have in fact recreated them this time in color. As we can see here, um, so skip past the slide. Um, this is the Temple of Olympian Zeus and we, uh, what you can see in color here is actually meant to be at the very top of the temple. And um, obviously these marbles are not in very good condition at all. So, um, um, they've got painted and re recreated and um, why not have a go at trying to make your own and um, we'd be very interested to see what kind of colors you come up with what kind of portraits you make um, and definitely do share it with us but we've got a creative task at the end of the video so do hold on so finally we arrive at the 12 labors 
and um, Tiberius and I will take it in turns to speak for no more than 30 seconds on each labour. Um, are you ready? Is Heracles ready? And let's get to it. Labour one. Hercules' first task was to defeat the Nemean lion. This lion had a skin so tough that no arrow of Hercules could pierce it and therefore kill it. Hercules used his brute force strength to knock out the lion with a club and therefore strangled it. On the advice of Athena, Hercules used the lion's claws to rip off its own skin, which Hercules used as an armor to protect himself for his next labors. When Hercules brought the lion back to King Eurystheus, the king was absolutely terrified. Well, at least Hercules had passed the first test. So uh, Hercules' second labor was to kill the nine-headed hydra. And this was a particularly difficult task because every time Hercules cut off one of the hydra's heads, it would grow back. So he experimented and realized that this task was going to be extremely difficult. And he worked out that if he cut one of the heads off and then burnt the top of the head, it wouldn't grow back. So he did all of this. And then when it came to the final biggest immortal head, he got a golden sword and cut the head off and burnt that head as well. So he, that's how he killed the Hydra. And you might also know that um, Hercules dipped um, his, um, his arrows in the blood of the Hydra. Um, and ironically, that's what killed him at the very end. But we won't spoil it any further. Yeah. Anyway, labor three, moving on. Um, this third labor was all about catching an animal alive. But this time, it was the Serenian hide, um, hind, which is a kind of female deer you might know. And this Serenian hind was said to have run quicker than any arrow could fly. It took Hercules one whole year to hunt it down in the land of the Hyperboreans. Hercules was successful and brought it back to King Eurystheus. However, since the hind was sacred to Artemis, who is the goddess of hunting, Hercules had to return it to the countryside alive, as he had promised. So far, so good. 3-0, Heracles. So his for, uh, Her um, Hercules' fourth labour was to capture the Aramanthian boar, who's a giant animal living on Mount Aramanthos, Aramanthos and the boar was also dedicated in the same way that the stag was to the goddess Artemis. So he, when he visited his friend Chiron, um, sorry, no, he visited his friend's um, place, Pholus, who was a, a centaur, and ended up in a rather unfortunate series of events, ended up killing all of his centaur friends because they all um, got drunk and attacked him at, a, at the party. And he fled, um, the, fle the centaurs that remained fled to Chiron's cave. And it was actually Chiron who uh, then advised Hercules to lure the Aramanthian boar into thick snow and capture him um, because the because the ball would be slowed down by the snow, mm. and when he did this, it was very easy for the Hercules to capture capture the ball. Perfect. Moving on to labor five. Um, this one was rather different compared to the others. Um, it didn't require Hercules to kill any beast, but was he was given a more tedious task. So King Orgius had a lot, and I mean a lot of cattle. Um, Hercules was made to clean the whole of the king's stables. Um, which had never been cleaned before and must have smelled pretty awful, all in one day. Hercules achieved this near impossible feat through diverting the nearby river Alpheus, which washed clean the stables and therefore completed his fifth labor. For Hercules' sixth labor, he had to slay the Stymphalian birds. And to do this, Athena helped him and provided him with a rattle. Uh, the sound of which produce, um, produced a really, really awful noise and basically scared the birds and made them fly from their, from their hiding places. And, um, and, and from there, it was very easy for Hercules to, with his poisonous arrows, to, to shoot at the birds and kill them. They were terrifying birds. They, were, um, they ate humans with their bronze beaks. So uh, it was important for Hercules to slay them. Perfect. The seventh labor was to bring back alive um, um, King Minos's bull, which caused havoc on the island of Crete. You might know Crete 
um, from a separate myth that we might come to. Um, Hercules was able to capture it with his bare hands and brought it back to an absolutely terrified King Eurystheus, who was also said to have um, hidden in a jar in fright. Hercules returned the bull to um, Marathon, which is a place in Greece, um, where the warrior Theseus later killed it. For labor eight, Hercules was ordered to steal the mares of Diomedes. And he, he got a group of young men to help him with this task. And he went and, uh, and stole the animals. These mares, these uh, horse type animals were uh, terrifying because they were trained to eat human flesh by, by their owner Diomedes. And um, he told one of the friends that he had brought along, Abderus, to look after the horses. Uh, whilst he was fighting Diomedes, and this was after they had stolen them. And Abderus was actually eaten by, by the mares, which enraged Hercules, and he fed Diomedes to his own horses. Later, um, because the horses had been, had eaten um, humans by that point, they were then, they became calm because they had been fed, and uh, when he brought and uh, Hercules brought them back to Eurystheus, who either sacrificed them to Hera or let them roam free as they had now become permanently calm. So on to labour nine, which I think is quite an interesting labour um, compared to the others. Um, Hercules was sent to get the girdle, which is a belt, um, from the queen of the Amazons. Um, and she was called Hippolyte. Um, the Amazons were a formidable tribe around the Black Sea region. They were all women and were known to be the strongest human beings of their kind, even stronger than men and the male warriors that we know of today. When Hercules came to the land of um, Themyscira, Hippolyte, the queen of the Amazons, is said to have been so impressed with everything she heard about Hercules that she gave the garland straight over to him. Later on, Hera, and remember, Hera hated Hercules, um, and Hera created a war between Hercules and the Amazons. However, Hercules came out victorious and killed Hippolyte and the other Amazons and sailed back to King Eurystheus with the girdle. For Hercules' tenth labour, he had to steal the cattle of Geryon. And Geryon lived uh, with his cattle in, um, in a faraway land on the island of Erechthea. And in order to get there, Hercules had to cross Libya, which was a very... Um, hot and la it was a land of desert so on his way there Hercules was so enraged by the heat that he was enduring and he fired an arrow up at the sun and interestingly Helios was actually quite impressed by Hercules's courage instead of being offended and allowed Hercules to use his golden chariot which was flying over because he was the the sun he was the god the sun god and he flew in his chariot every day across the sky carrying the sun. So he allowed Hercules to get in his chariot and he, he landed, he reached Erythea, um, which was the land of um, Geryon and his cattle overnight. And he was able to kill Geryon by um, a powerful shot with his arrow. Uh, and he brought the cattle back. It took him a year because it was such a long journey, but he brought the cattle back all the way through Italy and returned to Eurystheus and also on his journey Hera sent, um, sent a lot of uh, further obstacles to him so that um, such as causing a flood um, so that it wouldn't be too easy for him to complete this labour. Yeah Hera definitely hated Hercules and um, yeah all the way from his birth. So nearly there the penultimate labour, labour 11. Hercules this time um, had to search out the golden apples, which were located on the very edge of the world and were guarded by the Hesperidae, um, which is a Greek word meaning the daughters of the sunset. Um, Hercules got directions from Nereus, who was um, the old man of the sea, and he could constantly change shape. Um, and while nearly there at the land of the Hesperidae, Hercules asked Atlas, and you might know him as the Titan God, who, healed, uh, who held up the heavens and the earth, as a punishment for overthrowing the gods. And Atlas, um, and Hercules asked Atlas to bring Hercules um, the golden apples in return for holding up the sky for him. When Atlas returned, Hercules tricked him, took the golden apples from him, and left Atlas to continue to hold up heaven and earth as he'd always done. That's 11 labors done, one to go. 
Yeah, his final 12th labour was to capture Cerberus, who was the guardian of the underworld. And this required a lot of preparation for this, for, um, for this labour. Hercules had to be initiated in the Eleusinian mysteries so that he was able to go to the underworld and actually return to, uh, to, to land and to, um, to the world above. And he also had to uh, get help from the goddess Hestia, who helped him with negotiating with Charon, who was the boatman that guided um, souls over the river Acheron towards the underworld. So once he had got there and once he, he, re um, he reached Hades, uh, he, just, he asked Hades whether he could take Cerberus to the surface, and the god agreed on the condition that no violence was used and um, Hercules was able to calm Cerberus down with his hands and brought it back, or brought it on his back um, to um, Eurystheus, who again, as you might expect, fled in terror uh, into his jar and asked Hercules to take the monster back to the underworld. And he released him from any other labors. So that, that's, that's the 12 labors complete, quite, um, quite exhausting. <laughs> And now we've got a little quiz uh, to test how many that you can remember. Can you remember all 12? Well, luckily for me, I've got Tiberius who will try and reach a top score of 12. Um, <laughs> and, and we'll give it a shot. So which one do you think this one is Tiberius out of those 12 labours? I think that's when he has to um, clean the, the stables of um, Algiers. Algiers. Very good. What about this one? I think that's when he has to uh, kill the Hydra, the nine-headed Hydra. Yes, lots of, lots of heads there. Um, I think this one could be one of two things, actually. Well, is it the um, the stag? That looks like the the um, the Serenian hind. Serenian hind. Um, oh. Yes. Do you try and follow on, um, listeners, um, as you're doing this? So some of you They're might having guess three yourselves. out of three. <laughs> we'll give you a couple. Uh, I won't answer for a couple of seconds, so you can guess it yourselves. This one should be easy, I think, Tiberius. Yeah, I think that's the Nemean lion. Excellent. One. What about this one? I think you did this one. Ooh. I think... Is that Cerberus? Uh, not yet. Um, actually, the cattle of Geraeum. Um, to get there, um, he had to kill a three-headed a three -headed giant. And this is, I think, one of the more kind of obscure details in the, in the 12 labours. So don't oh, worry if you didn't get yeah. that. Caught, caught me out there. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> uh, what about this one, Tiberius? That was when he had to capture the Aramanthian bull. That looks right to me. And this one, think about the, think about the apples. Okay, yes. Um, so labor, was it uh, labor, labor 11? Labor 11, yeah. yeah. Get to get the golden apples. And um, these, these, these three children are probably the daughters of the, daughters of the evening, the Hesperidae. Um, a strange drawing, but you know, colorful nonetheless. What about this one? Uh, I think you might get this, Tiberius. Oh, that's, that's Cerberus for you. <laughs> that's Cerberus. Three-headed dog. And this one you did? The mares of Diomedes. Yes. Um, Human-eating mares. Yeah. This one's a little bit strange. I think it could be one of two. Um, we've already had the... the oh, that's true. So is that the Cretan bull? That, that, that is the Cretan bull looking rather happy, I think. Uh, not really fierce. <laughs> what about this one? I think this could be one of the last ones. Um, the Stim, um, Stimphalian birds. Birds, excellent. And here we come back to the, the smelly stables. Yeah, um, well done if you've, um, if you've followed on and got most of them. Um, slightly different pictures, slightly harder to read, but um, and, you know, figure out what's going on. But um, we hope that this served as a little bit of a reminder of the 12 labors, which can get a little bit, can be a bit difficult to get your head around. So don't worry if you've got a little bit lost. Um, we'll have plenty of opportunities to look over them again. Yeah. And finally, um, as we wrap up, and we thought we'd set you a little creative task. So um, this is Hercules, um, who's um, gained immortal status. And he's asking you all the way back from 2,500 years ago, um, can you draw a picture for me? Can you make, can you draw a picture of me and maybe do the thir 13th labor of your own choice? What would your 13th yeah. labor be? What colors would you use as you saw on those, um, on those sculptures on the sides of the temple? Um, go wild, be creative. And um, for anyone who likes to, um, you know, who wants to send one in to us, and um, we more than happily share it on our next video and give you a shout out. 
So do definitely get submissions to us. And from Tiberius and I, that's the end of part one. So enjoy the rest yeah. of your days and hope to see you on the second video. Well, let's see. See you later, guys.